three, two, one, go. What is going on, guys, and welcome back to this edition of the Microcast. It's been a hot minute since I've recorded a podcast. I've uploaded a podcast. As you can see, if you're watching here on YouTube, boom, it's fitting. We're going to be talking about probably Black Ops 4 most of the time. Um, and we have the video portion back on YouTube. If you take a look over at YouTube, you, you can see me there. Hi, what's going on, guys? We got the video portion back. I started off the podcast with video portion. Thought it was kind of weird because I'm the only one here. There's not really much going on. But I got a green screen now. Put that in the back. I thought maybe it is YouTube. You're there for video. So why not bring the video portion back? If you're listening to it on SoundCloud or iTunes or the Apple Podcast, uh, anything like that, what's going on, guys? You're only going to hear my sexy, sexy voice. Uh, anyway, it is a podcast, so that's what it is. It's all voice. Uh, Nonetheless, let's get into what we're going to be talking to talking about today. Really don't have any agenda on what, what I want to talk about. Don't really have an idea of where I'm going to go with this. I know I'm going to talk about some Black Ops 4 beta, uh, beta action. The beta starts a week from this Friday, August the 3rd for PlayStation 4. So I'm super hyped for that. I still have to pre-order it actually. Um, I believe it's, it is a private beta, so you have to pre-order the game in order to get access to that beta, which I have not done yet. Um, so I gotta, I gotta get on that. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. So we're gonna be talking Black Ops Four action, maybe some UFC. We've had a lot of fights. We just had International Fight Week, um, like a week or t- week or so ago, and we we were having fights like every single week. Um, I haven't really kept up on much of them because I haven't even known they're there. To be completely honest with you. Um, like the Sunday morning ones, I haven't really kept up on. The last one I bought was the one where Max Holloway was supposed to fight uh, Brian Ortega for the featherweight title. Uh, that fight got canceled. We might be delving into a little bit of UFC. Um, other than that, Black Ops 4 is going to be the main the main point of talk here. And I know I try and, I try and make these podcasts an hour long. I'm just going to talk however long it is whenever I run out of things to talk about. That's going to be that. I'm going to end it. I'm not going to force it to be an hour. I don't want to just talk to talk. Um, So if it's an hour, that's great. That's where I'd like it to be. But, you know, other than that, let's just get into this biatch. Welcome welcome back to the microcast. Let me just say that. It's been a while. I know I've been super inconsistent. I've just been lazy as shit. Like, I'm just straight up. I've wanted to record a podcast. I just haven't. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it now. I'm going to try and be more consistent, man. I... That's something I struggle with. That's something I kind of want to talk about too. It's it's consistency. Like I do not have consistency. I am not a consistent person and I don't like it. I like, I, I want to be consistent so bad. I just, I can't be. I don't know what it is with anything in my life. It's super hard to be consistent. And I think something that goes, you know, hand in hand with that is being unorganized. Um, I'm always in disarray. My room is always a mess. Every once in a while, I'll get the, I'll just look around and be like, dude, what am I doing? And I'm sure a lot of people are like this too. I just, I, whatever that OCD type thing that people have is where they have to keep a clean room, everything has to be in its place. I have zero, like literally none of that. My room is always in disarray and I know Jordan Peterson would be disappointed. You know, he says, just clean your damn room. Um, I, I'm working at it. I, I, I've been, I've been doing much better. I've been cleaning it at least once a week and I don't understand how I get it so dirty and so messy <laughs> in a week, but that's besides the point. I just, I, that, whatever, this is what we're going to start the, the, the podcast out with is just talking about consistency, organization. I, I'm not either of those things. Like I just said, it's, it's pretty crazy. Even in high school, middle, throughout my entire schooling career, if you will, um, I, those things have bitten me in the ass a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times you look at, you go back to like, uh, elementary school when you had like the little cubby in your desk Dude, that thing for me was always destroyed. There were crumbled up pieces of paper, there were broken pencils, whatever the case was, erasers that I haven't seen in it like since the beginning of the damn year, homework that I knew I did, but it was somewhere within the the heap in my little cubby thing. I knew I did it, but I couldn't turn it in because I couldn't find it in time. I couldn't find it. You know those people that like in high school especially they come in and the teacher's like you have your homework and they're like yeah yeah let me just look and they're looking through their binder for like 20 minutes and you realize this motherfucker didn't do no homework he's just not gonna turn it in and it it was like that except for i really did do it like i swear i did it it was just somewhere and even this is goes out through middle school and high school for me um it it was there i was just it was in the mess that i called a backpack or that i called a locker and i could not find it 
and so I couldn't turn it in. So it affected my grades. Being that unorganized affected my grades like uh, at times because I couldn't find my homework. I couldn't turn my homework in. I'm just going to let y'all know I'm parched. I'm drinking some water right now. It's I, I usually have a fan on when I stream or something. I got this bright ass light on me and it's hot as fuck upstairs. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a drink of water just... If you hear anything weird, just know that that's what it is. Y'all see on YouTube, but on the on the podcast, on iTunes, y'all can't hear, y- y'all can't see that. So just want to give you guys a heads up. Anyway, yeah, man. So just being I- inconsistent too. Like some examples of this is like I'm sure everyone, like not everyone, but a lot of people have this inconsistency. Which the example I'm gonna make is that like working out, exercising, that type of thing. Um, you'll be fucking lazy. I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna try not to cuss as much. You, you, you like uh. For you'll go a stretch of time of being lazy and not doing anything, not eating right, not exercising, going to the gym like you want to. But it's always in your mind like, man, I need to start going to the gym. I feel like crap. I've been eating pizza and, and hamburgers and and whatever the case is, too many carbs, too much fat, too many calories, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever diet you're on. And you, 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 you're thinking about it for so long. Like, I need to go to the gym, man. I need to go to the gym every day. It's like every time you finish a meal, you're just like, what am I doing? I need to go to the gym. And then all of a sudden, you'll get, you'll, you'll get super motivated for like, for, for whatever reason. You'll, get, you'll be like, man, you know what? I am going to go to the gym. I am going to start eating right. I'm going to start this diet. I'm going to do it. And that's that. And I know a lot of people are like this. I am too. And then you'll start it. Boom. Strict as hell. In your mind, you get a solid, solid foundation in your noggin. You're like, all right, boom. Diet started. Eliminate, eliminate junk food. Boom. Day one down, you exercise. You're like, whoo, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Body's a little sore. It's whatever. It's whatever. And then the next day comes. You may you lose it. You're like, yeah, okay. I'm sore, but I can, I can still I'll push through it. I, I don't need the junk food right now. Like, I feel good without it. Boom. And then second day goes by, no junk food. You're exercising. The third day goes by, you're like, man, I'm really, I got kick, got a little crick in my neck. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I can go to the store, get some, you know, get some lettuce, make a salad or something. But do you that? I got some Hot Pockets, you know what I mean? Hop two minutes in the microwave. It's good to go. You know what I'm saying? It's good to go. And that's when everything, you know, might fall apart. You might resist the temptation, but then the, by the day four, you're you're mentally broken already. I'm mentally broken. I'm just like, enough. Like, I'm making the hot pocket. You know what I mean? Like, I, I ain't got time to go to the store, get that lettuce. I don't got time to go get some apples and oranges and whatever the hell it is. It's just like, you know, I'm, I'm the hot pockets quicker. Boom. And that's what I mean. That's That's sort of an example by inconsistency. That's not really what I mean. Like I'm on the keto diet right now. It's it's kind of hard to like not eat bread or whatever. But I I'm staying disciplined on the path. You know what I mean. Uh, so that's not really that that's an example. So y'all can relate, and that's that's pretty much the concept I'm I'm getting at with the consistency thing there. It's just that's not what I'm going through right now. That that's definitely a part of it. Don't 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 get me wrong. Like I've been on keto for like three weeks now. Again, starting on there, I'm trying to go a month with you know being strict on the keto. Um, Anyway, back to what I was saying um, with the consistency thing. Um, But like things with me, it's like something that hurts me the most. And it's like it hits me deep in the feels because this is what I thought I was going to do. It's um, and this is like sort of a a DNA thing like DNA. It's like something I can't really control is, of course, if you all have been watching me for a long enough, you know that I. I, I'm Call of Duty's my game. No shit. We're about to talk about Black Ops. You already know this. I don't have to explain this. Anyway, but I I wanted to be a professional Call of Duty player. That that's what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and during the Advanced Warfare era, that's all I did during Advanced Warfare was play competitive Call of Duty. That is literally I didn't play public. I did play public matches, but I didn't enjoy them. Literally, I played public matches until I was able to play competitively um during the advanced war warfare season um every single night that was really where i my stream my twitch started to actually blow up i i regret leaving twitch and, and going to youtube and all that but that's it's it's whatever it's in the past it what well, it is what it is um excuse me all right um yeah so what was i saying oh i'm, I'm gonna take a drink of my water while i think about what the hell i was saying 
All right, yeah. So um, during like during the advanced warfare is really where I was hitting it hard. I was really thinking in my head like, man, I want to be a pro COD player. This is what I want to do. I watched Optic play. I watched Envy play. I watched uh, I watched Phase play a lot. Um, Splice. I remember watching a lot of Splice, you know, from the European scene. And I, all I did was watch Call of Duty, play competitive Call of Duty. I went to work. This was when I was just a, a delivery driver. I had no responsibility at all. I was closing delivery driver. I got home from work. I played co competitive Call of Duty with my friends until the wee hours of the morning. You can talk about 5, 6, 7 a.m. Uh, before. And then that's what I would do. I would play competitive Call of Duty, get like five hours of sleep, and then go to work, repeat, rinse and repeat. That's what I did. Competitive Call of Duty. And in, okay, let's sp specifically focus on the gameplay here. And this isn't just focusing on Advanced Warfare. This is all Call of Duty. This is all video games, really. It's, it's like, uh, and I know some people are like this. They describe them as streaky. Um, some days they will just go off. They cannot, and this is me. They just go off. They can't be touched. It's like, oh, really? You think you're good? I'm two steps ahead of you at all times. I'm just going to decimate you. It didn't matter. Like, I played against uh, amateur Call of Duty players at that time at some points. And if you, they caught me on an on day, it was like lights out. They, they couldn't kill me. No one could kill me. I could literally play with the pros on those days. And that's not tooting my own horn or anything. It's just, it's a fact. Like, I was, I would go off off and I, I do I go off to the point where it's like oh this guy's not this like th there's another level to this guy to me they're like there's another level like I can do that and other days you know on the flip side the whole inconsistent thing I can't even play a public match without going negative and it, without getting a kill like it, it's a bad sometimes man where I will play I'll, I'll play people that are trash I'll get turned on I can't shoot straight uh, my mind is wandering. I'm not in the game. I'm kind of just aimlessly wandering around. I'm not setting up positioning. I'm not getting behind head glitches. I'm challenging dumb things. I'm, you know, not drop shotting, not jump shotting, that type of thing. I can't even hit the broadside of a barn. You know what I'm saying? So, in the gameplay sense, that's where the inconsistency inconsistency comes in. And it's never in between. It's never like, oh, I can go, I can go uh, even. I'll go, you know, and search and destroy five and five. It's like, no, I'm either seventeen and zero, or I'm zero and seventeen. You know what I mean? It's like I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know like if it's my focus. I don't know what it is, but it's like super inconsistent. Like I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if there's something I could do to help this. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like this. I even know pro Call of Duty players. They, they say are streaky. Like I know from time to time, Clayster, he's super streaky. When you know when he plays well, his team tends to get further in the tournament. When he starts to shit the bed, his t like his team tends to get knocked out of the tournament earlier than they they would if he would he was on. So I know it's possible to get to a high level being inconsistent. It's just with me for some reason I. I, I'm super inconsistent and and even going with guns like I was talking about, about it today on my stream someone was like hey you're on with the sub today that's you know you know that's weird because the past couple days you've been using an AR and just to, to use this example uh, to the past two days um, or let, let's take it three days ago I was using an SMG because that's what I've been doing the PPSH in World War two um, I was playing rank play and I was playing like dude I was like I was going super negative bottom of the list every single respawn rank play I couldn't get kills it felt like I was getting melted I just couldn't I couldn't do anything so then the next day I was like hey let me just try out an STG I, I need to change something up something's not working and I lo and behold I used the, uh, the the STG dominating first place every rank play game even if we lost I dropped like 13 kills in a search and destroy. We lost, by the way. I was like 13 and two in a search and destroy, um, or something like that. And it was like I was dominating with the STG the past two days. Today, I get on for stream. I start using the STG. I'm getting destroyed. People are turning on me. I can't get kills. It feels like they're not dying. I'm like, okay, we're going through this again. I switch back to the STG today. Boom! Lights out. That's when the guy made the comment. He's like, "Man, you're on with the S uh, the uh, the SMG today, the PPSH." I'm like, "Yeah, I just I, I don't know what it is because I know like in competitive Call of Duty, Scump is an SMG. I know sometimes there's roll switches, but just follow along here. 
like uh formals obviously an ar octane is an ar they use ar that's their primary weapon they're expected to perform with that weapon use that weapon don't pull out a sub that type of things maybe on certain maps people will switch off um uh, methods is a just kind of like a flex i guess i i guess crim is really the flex methods is an ar um but like and i know there are flex players that could use both but you know it really depends on the map the situations that type of thing me it's just like it depends on the day 100 percent the day and i don't know why it's not a feeling thing i just i don't know why one day like the past two days have been STG days. Today was an SMG PPSH day. I could not use the STG to save my freaking life. Um, I even pulled out an STG on Gibraltar uh, because I saw my teammates were all were all running subs, and I was like, "Well, we gotta have an AR in this bitch." So I took my STG. I went up top on bridge, and I couldn't hit anything. I could not get kills. And I was like, well, I'm pulling out an SMG. Boom. As soon as I turn on it, pull on an SMG, I start getting kills. We were behind by like a hundred points. So we came back and won. That's all on stream. Like, I don't know what it is, but whatever this inconsistency bug is, I know a lot of people have it. I have it really, really badly. Um, and that's just something I, I'm trying to work on being inconsistent. That's the same thing like with the gym sometimes, or not the gym, but you know, exercising diet. Sometimes I'm on the diet. Sometimes I'm not. It's, it's like an inconsistency thing. So that's, I don't know. This is something I just wanted to talk about, you know, get it off on the podcast and, and, and hopefully you guys can relate. I know a lot of people can, whether you want to admit it or not. You can, and, and like what I was saying, why it hurts me going back to that point and why it hurts my soul is because I wanted to be a professional Call of Duty player and I realized with that inconsistency I just wasn't up to the level like there's there's levels to it y'all know to be really great at something there's levels to it and I was never bottom tier like I was always pretty good I'm better than people that play casually it's it's like whatever and then you get to the competitive level and it's like I was even better than most people that played competitive I went on like a, a 30 20 to 30 i don't remember what exactly the number was on advanced warfare uh win streak on on singles on singles game battles i went on like a 20 or 30 game win streak it was pretty crazy and then on like iw world war ii i i had gone on like 10 game losing streaks uh, like, you know what i mean there's there's levels to it and i was i would always get up there i would i would play against like amateur players like i remember i played against uh I played against Pharaoh and Felony um, in Advanced Warfare when they weren't even like close to being pro yet. They're pro. They're professional players now. Both of them. I, I believe Pharaoh's still on TK. Uh, Felony is on. Um, Who is Felony on? I don't remember what team Felony is on, but I I played against them quite a bit in Advanced Warfare, and I would keep up with them, bro. I would be like I would be there on the days I was on. But then you'd get to like the am like the real amateur that are just about to break pro. And then it's like there was something that they saw. There was a way that they moved that I just didn't have. I couldn't comprehend it. It was just something in my brain. I didn't have it. And that's it, it was it's a crushing thing to come to the realization that you're not boom, you're not to that top upper echelon to break in to becoming pro. I'm just not good enough. That's just plain and simple. I was not good enough. I'm not able to be good enough. I'm not capable of it. Um, that's something I had to come to the realization of. That's why I took a step down from competitive Call of Duty, like wanting to be a pro and focusing my um, focusing my things on other things, um, focusing my you know my intentions on helping other people become pro, that type of thing, and just streaming and, and whatnot. And just just to hit on one more little thing on inconsistency is the um, like the YouTube thing, the Twitch thing. If you if y'all have been following me, y'all know I've been super inconsistent. Just the podcast, like I was saying, I want to upload podcasts. I want to get out YouTube videos. I want to stream. I've been pretty consistent on streaming, but like I said, I wanted to be I, I wanted to upload to YouTube yet. Ever since I made that video, I have not uploaded to YouTube. Ever since I've made that video, I have not uploaded a podcast. Um, and it, I come up with excuses. That's really what it is. And man, we gotta eliminate the excuses. Like uh, people, if you if you're blaming people for your stuff, if you're blaming anything, any cause, any anything other than yourself, you just eliminate the excuses. Come on, what are we doing here? I, I'm talking really to myself here, but also to you. If you guys are you know, can relate to this or whatever, just, elim I need to eliminate my excuses, because sometimes I'm like, man, I, I want to record this podcast, but I got to go to work in three hours, 
and I'm going to be there and I'm going to hate my life. And it's like, yeah, you have three hours to record a podcast. It doesn't take that long. Like right now I'm at 20 minutes, I in, an hour at the most, whatever that I've recorded a podcast. It's like, okay, an hour. Not a big deal. I have three of them bitches. I have three hours before I need to go to work. But I've already defeated myself mentally like, oh, I don't want to do anything before work. I just want my leisure. I want to watch Netflix. I want to watch YouTube. I want to do whatever the case is. I just, oh, I don't want to record a podcast before I have to go to work. And that's terrible. Like, that's just an excuse. It's like, I, I enjoy recording podcasts. And that's the that's the messed up thing here, is I actually like recording podcasts. I actually enjoy recording YouTube videos. But for some reason, I could twist it in my mind where YouTube and podcast and streaming seems like a task. It seems like a difficult, like a job. And it's weird how I do that because, like, once I start doing it, and I know once I start doing it, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to have fun. Like when I was right before I was, I was going to record this podcast. I was debating, should I stream again? Cause I streamed earlier this morning. I couldn't, I, and I said I was going to stream again. I was like, should I stream again? Or should I record this podcast? And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to record a podcast. I was getting ready to stream. And I was like, I was thinking, I was like, should I do a podcast, man? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I know I'm going to enjoy it, but whatever. I've talked for 20 minutes right now and it feels like 10. It feels like five. You know what I mean? And so I'm, I decided, I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do I'm going to record a podcast. I said I was going to report a, record a podcast this morning. I'm going to record a podcast. I forced myself to do it. I hit, I adjust some settings on my Streamlabs OBS. I put the background back there. Y'all can see Black Ops 4 right there. Uh, shout out to Black Ops 4. We're going to get to that in a second. I know I've rambled on about this, but... You know, and then I forced myself to do it. I hit record. Didn't think about what I was going to say before I started the podcast. Hit record. Hit record on my Streamlabs OBS for YouTube. Did my three, two, one audio sync. Boom. Started talking. That's when the podcast started. And I'm enjoying it. I'm having so much fun right now. I'm talking to myself. I'm literally talking to myself right now. I'm not a big, I'm not a big streamer. I'm not a big YouTuber. Literally zero people have a chance of watching this right now. Literally, there's a chance that no one will see this podcast, but I don't care. I'm doing it. I'm having fun. I'm I'm expressing to you to to maybe to myself what I'm you know what I'm thinking. An inconsistency was something I wanted to talk about, so I talked about it, and that's really my spiel on that. I went off for goddamn twenty minutes talking about that. I'm fine with it because that's something I wanted to talk about. And this is the microcast. It's, it's my motherfucking podcast. I can talk about whatever I want. And that's something I feel like a lot of you can relate to and just something I need to get off my chest. I'm, I'm going to – I need to make a, like a dedication, an oath, a pact with myself that I'm going to be more consistent with the things I do. I'm going to be more organized in my life. I'm going to clean my room, that type of thing. So we're going to move on here and just take a sip of my water. I'm hot as hell, like I was saying. Um, so yeah, that that's really inconsistent, unorganized. I'm making a pact to myself. Keep an eye out for the YouTube videos. Keep an eye out for the podcast. I'm hoping to do podcasts at least once a week. I need to stick to it, micro. Stick to it. Don't be inconsistent. Be consistent. That is what I need to do. Set a routine. All right. So that being said, Black Ops 4, my dudes. I'm hyped for it. I know you guys are hyped for it. Um, hopefully, you guys actually... You know what? I, I've, I've been hearing things. Most people, not most people, a lot of people aren't having the same hype for Black Ops 4 like they usually do with Call of Duty games. Even though we've had bad Call of Duty games in the past. IW, people didn't like Advanced Warfare. Ghost was a flop uh, the time it was out. Um, but I've been hearing this year, like, YouTubers aren't as hyped for Black Ops 4. Everyone's nervous. And I'm kind of thinking this is a good thing. Um, and I, I, I talked a lot about Black Ops 4. On my last two podcasts, I believe, but Call of Duty is my thing. So if this is a Call of Duty podcast, excuse me, if this is a Call of Duty podcast, then so be it. Call it the Codcast. I'm sorry, but if you guys haven't heard, there is a podcast called the Codcast uh, by a former. He just he's very recently retired, named Nameless. Um, he has a podcast called the Codcast. It's actually great. He has pro players on there. He talks to him. I actually really, really like it, and I suggest you go follow that on on iTunes or wherever YouTube, wherever you get your stuff, um, your podcast. Great podcast. But literally two, like two 
or three weeks before he released the first podcast, I was thinking about making a podcast called The Codcast. I missed my opportunity on that one. Even if I didn't, I'm sure he supersedes me. He's got way more followers. He's He's been a pro player since Call of Duty 2, so obviously he'd probably get that over me. But just a fun fact there, I, I thought about making a podcast called The Codcast, but I didn't execute on it, so I've got no one to blame but myself. Um, anyway, that being said... Um, what was the name? Black Ops 4. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people are saying that they're not hyped about it, uh, that they, they're just not feeling the way they usually do um, about it. They're really excited for the Black op, Blackout mode, which is the Battle Royale mode, in case you all haven't heard. Bl Call of Duty has their own Battle Royale now called Blackout. Um, we're going to get a beta in September, which I'm super stoked for. And the reason why I say that, it, it might be a good thing that people aren't, you know, as hyped about it this year is because every single year even if it's a bad cod like i was saying um the hype for the next call of duty is real the hype that call of duty is going to go back to its former you know heyday in modern warfare 2 black ops 2 that type of thing um everyone has the hype and the hope that it's going to go back to that and with so many years being disappointed for people and they, they've kind of lost hope and they kind of lost hype and that's actually, I think, potentially could be a very, very good thing for Call of Duty. Since the hype isn't there, the expectation, the bar, if it will, isn't as high as previous years. So the expectation is lower, you know what I'm saying? So say Black Ops 4 is just the greatest Call of Duty ever made. It's better than Modern Warfare 2, it's better than Black Ops 2, and people absolutely love it. It's, I feel... It has the potential to blow up and get Call of Duty back, you know, the franchise back to where it once was because people aren't expecting much from it and it over delivers, you know, and that just makes the hype go up. And if the blackout mode is good, it's like, oh, now there's another layer on top that we could be getting something really good in the battle royale genre, you know, throughout, you know, through the next life cycle. Infinity War next, if they, I, I doubt they would make a new uh, battle royale mode i think they would just implement new things into the battle royale that's already existing um maybe come out with like a season type thing like fortnite does but it'd be like different season infinity ward would in you know, you know make the dlc packs and and do all that um and so i think that it has the potential to boost the franchise higher than it's ever been and with you know with the hype of fortnite and i'm thinking about all these things that are going on right now in my head this is how i'm breaking it down i'm thinking the fortnite is at top and it's been at the top for eight months ish sort of six to eight months fortnite has been a goliath of a game it's set new standards and props to fortnite it set new standards for developers it set new expectations for gamers um it's introduced the battle royale genre to a whole whole nother dimension of things that could that could possibly be done and i know h1z1 introduced the battle royale, battle royale genre to the masses really i know arma 2 um you know daisy that type of thing there, there had been you know battle royales before that but h1z1 is the is the is the one that actually pushed the battle royale genre to to the pinnacle not not to the pinnacle fortnite's doing that now but to like the the forefront um of gaming like gaming genres there's been horror first person shooters third person shooters and h1z1 was really the one to push battle royale genre into like a viable gaming you know thing with 100 people servers and that type of thing no matter how unoptimized and and the you know mistakes that sony entertainment and, and daybreak now as they call it um have made i you know got props to h1z1 but where i was going with that is fortnite okay i'm gonna i'm just gonna break it down in my mind here fortnite has been at the top for about eight months and i don't know how familiar you guys are with like um stars masses of star okay but just what i'm trying to say here is if, if the bigger a star is the 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 um the younger it dies so here's what it is if it's a smaller star it burns for trillions of years say um, like when our sun dies, it's going to turn into a white dwarf and it's going to burn for another uh, approximately trillion years, a few hundred billion years because it's a small star. It has it has sustainability for such a long time. But when we get into like red supergiants, they burn fast. 
so they don't live as long. They live for a few million years, and then they explode into supernovas. But that happens within the within the course of a like few million years, which is like a a snap. It's like a couple days in. It's like a, it's like a few years in in you know astronom astro astronomical terms, and and that that's what where I think Fortnite could be headed right now. I don't know. They Epic Games seems to do everything right, so this might not be a correct theory, but just what I'm thinking what could happen is a possibility and why it might be good for Call of Duty is that Fortnite did all the heavy lifting. It, 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 it skyrocketed Battle Royale into the stratosphere, into a different universe, and it's been burning for about eight months here. And with something this gigantic, like, a, like the star, it cannot sustain that much growth and that much... It can't sustain the viewership it has right now. It can't sustain the, the, the playability it has. It's just not possible. It literally is not possible for it to sustain it for uh, a prolonged period of time. Um, I know you could argue, well, Call of Duty has been around for a decade and it still has millions and you know players. And I, I get that. But like I said, this is just a theory. So with that being said, I feel like people may get sick of Fortnite. Because it's so popular, it's so oversaturated on YouTube, it's so oversaturated on Twitch, it's oversaturated everywhere. Like, you hear about Fortnite in the news. Like, that's how crazy big Fortnite is. Um, they they announced, like, a $100 million tournament pool, like, throughout the entire year. I think that's what it was. Insane. And so, I think Fortnite can't, it's too big to die. Just like Call of Duty right now, it's too big to actually die. But I think that People are going to get so sick of Fortnite that, it, and they're not going to want to go back to, to um, PUBG because PUBG has a lot of optimization problems. And H1Z1 kind of screwed the pooch. Um, H1Z1 is great on PS4. Don't get me wrong. Um, I love H1Z1 on PS4. I love H1Z1 in general. I think it's 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 my personal favorite Battle Royale game I've, I've played. Um, I like it better than PUBG. I like it better than Fortnite. It's just my opinion. I love H1Z1. Um, but... It, it screwed the pooch. There's too many things wrong with it. Um, there, there were too many prolonged problems that Daybreak didn't fix in time. Where the 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 people that played it were just like, all right, I'm done with this game. I'm going to PUBG or Fortnite. PUBG, and then Fortnite came around, and then they started going to, to Fortnite. It just gave them different avenues. Now with Realm Royale and also Islands of Nine, the battle royale genre is getting super saturated. People are gonna get sick of battle royale, which could could hurt my theory here but i think that fortnite being at the top like i said and all these other battle royale games people are going to be just looking for something new something fresh something different and what can capitalize on that something that people are familiar with call of duty a lot of people have played call of duty you talk to most gamers now over the age of like 16 have played Call of Duty and it's actually part of their childhood. Whether it be Black Ops 2 or Modern Warfare 2 like me, it's ingrained within their past. And what better way to skyrocket nostalgia than something old implementing the newest thing? Battle Royale, that, that's where the blackout mode comes in. And so I think with this oversaturation and with Fortnite burning for so long, using the, you know, the metaphor of the star, um, I think that people will get super super tired at Fortnite. moved like this blackout mode if it's good mind you if, if there's it's a possibility that blackout mode could absolutely tank and it could suck there's rumors that it's only going to be 50 to 64 players which if the map is scaled right shouldn't really be an issue look at islands of nine uh it, it's, it's based on uh, it's a it's a 50 person battle royale but it, i've heard it feels just like a, a PUBG game or a fortnite game because of the map is scaled correctly to the to the amount of people that the server can hold so it's 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 a 50 person esport that's what they're calling an esport based battle royale which battle royale doesn't really I, I don't know i just i don't enjoy esport battle royales at this moment um i think h1z1 did it the best just saying um but yeah okay and I think that Call of Duty has the perfect opportunity to capitalize on nostalgia and also the the new thing, the Battle Royale genre. People are going to be sick of it by the time Black Ops comes out, I have a feeling. I think people already are. You listen to YouTubers, they're just like, every once in a while, like, I don't even want to play Fortnite just because there's so many tryhards on it. People are building. It's like, it's crazy. I don't even want to deal with all that drama. 
obviously you have the TSM myths and the actually I, I don't know what's going on with him I, I shouldn't even mention him because I, I literally don't even know who he is but the ninjas they're always they're not going to burn out on it that's how they make their living that's what blue ninja up it's always going to have a place in his heart but I'm saying I'm talking about the majority of people um YouTubers you talk like you listen to them especially I've been listening like obviously I'm a huge optic fan that's no surprise um in their podcast they've already talked about how they're kind of sick of Fortnite and about how they don't even want to play it because there's sweaty tryhards on there all the damn time and so just taking that into account they're good every a lot of people are going to be sick of it and stop playing and just wait for something fresh that's when blackout mode could come in and swoop in and be like hey guys remember that old game y'all used to play called call of duty well guess what we're implementing some new things here here's what's popular now our take on it david vonderhaar lord vonderhaar uh, we knocked it out of the park here's this game it's amazing we learn from our mistakes here's support we're going to support it update every week every two weeks boom it blows up call of duty is revived hashtag revive cod and it can actually be on top again people enjoy playing the games and the only thing we have to worry about there is that call of duty is on a one-year life cycle i think this is a big mistake um this is something i want to go into uh in a second but that's the only thing I'm worried about is Call of Duty being on a one-year cycle. And that may or may not affect blackout mode. Um, we'll, we'll come back and talk about that. So that's how I think Call of Duty can get boosted back into the, the masses. And people really start enjoying Call of Duty again. Is because of the oversaturation of Battle Royale modes. And blackout could, could, you know, could capitalize on that. Um, other than that the core game mechanics and, and whatever black ops for uh like i said we're gonna have a beta on the august the third that's a week from this friday as i'm recording this on uh the 24th um of of july and so just thinking about what we have this year um we already went over it zombies multiplayer and there's no single excuse me there's no single player there's going to be their own standalone missions, which are going to describe, like, the characters' backgrounds a little more. Excuse me. Um, and uh, that's all well and dandy. And uh, I just, I, I'm really, I'm really hopeful that the multiplayer isn't some BS casual game. Like, like, a, like, how do I, exp like, uh, like, take Counter-Strike, for instance. Counter-Strike has been is like one of those white dwarfs has been burning for a trillion years and it's never really died it and, and I'm, I'm not even kidding counter-strike has been around since the 90s and it hasn't really changed has not changed goddamn car alarm going off in the back it hasn't really changed much and the reason why i think that they've been able to do this is because they focus all their gameplay they focus their maps they focused um, the way their gun mechanics work, they focus the way, um, they focus the way footstep sounds and 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 everything that Counter Strike does, they focus on competitive gameplay. The the and casual is like a a back step. It's just a practice to get to competitive. Like they have gun game, which is like a fun little break. They have the casual playlist, and then they have the competitive playlist. And a majority of the people that play Counter Strike play competitive and anyone that's playing casual is just trying to either warm up or get better so that they can go into competitive and dominate and call of duty over the years has had an opposite approach to this and this is why they've been able to make so much money this is why they've been able to sustain for so long is because call of duty focuses on the casual players 90 percent of the time and the the other 10 percent they focus on competitive um, and that, that is an issue to me. Like, I get it. People want to come and that's why people buy the game. They want to get off work. They want to come play some TDM with their friends and just chill. And I, I totally get that. I totally understand it. That's, that's super fine and, and whatever. But I think if they focused on competitive first, they would have such a strong, and they already kind of do. Like the people like myself that are in the competitive Call of Duty scene are super dedicated, super loyal. I follow a lot of the teams and we have like a like a, a root. Like our roots are in Call of Duty so we love to stay there. And I think that 
if Call of Duty were to focus on competitive first, casual second, their main core audience would grow and the casual players would still have their things to come to um, and play. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know if it's going to be this this year. There's been, you know, speculation on whether competitive Call of Duty is going to go to 5v5 with a healer. And it's always been 4v4 if you haven't, if you didn't know. Um, but I think that this might be the year where they actually do that. And I know that um, Treyarch in the past with Black Ops 2 have, have put a, like a, like more of an emphasis on competitive than, than you know, the other developers. Um and I really think that they're gonna they're they're gonna put more emphasis on competitive this year than they have you know past for World War Two season, and um, but here's the thing, with these specialist abilities and with the stim pack where you could pretty much almost heal immediately after you get injured, which you you're actually with the stim pack able to heal quicker than you would in another Call of Duty game where you auto regen health, which is kind of BS. It it really it really irks me that that's a thing that you can literally get shot go behind the wall heal come back out and just destroy someone um because they think you're one shot whatever the case is they think you're weak and in reality you have the stim on so you can just keep healing in you know indefinitely every couple seconds and those type of things worry me for casuals or public matches in call of duty's terms um because i really want to be able to play public matches and have to try like i know how the dumb that sounds but actually have it be somewhat competitive and then go into competitive and and not be shell-shocked by like the difference in in play style it, it, it really shouldn't be that way and I, like i said i think if call of duty would focus more on competitive first casual second that everyone could still like they could have the competitive rule set in casual gameplay so to speak and i don't think people would even mind they would just be like okay it's a new call of duty game i'm a casual player i'm gonna come home from work i'm gonna have fun with it anyway but little do they know they're playing under competitive rule sets you know what i'm saying maybe tweak a few things obviously but i feel like that's the that's the way to go who am i to say anything i'm just a fan you know i'm not a developer I don't like obviously Activision wants to make their money. Uh, they're treating Call of Duty as a cash cow. That's no, that's no secret. So they're trying to put in these futuristic, not even futuristic. They're trying to put in like these these gimmicks. Like here, this thing is cool. Explosion. Uh, how would you like to have weed on your gun? That type of thing. And <laughs> well, whatever. I don't have a problem with that. It's just an example. I don't know. It's something that came to my mind. And people pay money for it because they're like, oh, that's awesome. Look at this thing. This is awesome. And just short attention span, you know, Adderall addicted brain type thing. And Call of Duty's playing on that to get people's money. I, it, Activision's a, a company. I get it. Their profit is the most important thing to them. And I think that's obviously going to maybe be the downfall of Call of Duty if they don't start, you know, supporting the developers. Because this isn't like Treyarch's fault. Infinity Ward's fault. Well, Infinity Ward has something to do with it. Um, Activision's fault. It's. It, I mean, it is Activision's fault. Um, they're the developers just want to make a really kick-ass game, but they're under the umbrella of Activision, who just wants to make money. They're there specifically solely. They're a company that focuses on profit. They have shareholders. They need to impress their shareholders. If their shareholders aren't happy, they're not getting money. The company goes, you know, down the tank, or the franchise goes down the tank because Activision has a ton of games. They have, you know, they have um, Overwatch, and their Overwatch League is doing really well. They have games, single-player games. Um, Activision will do fine without Call of Duty, even though Call of Duty is its cash cow. I just wanted to, you know, throw that in there. I'm parched again. Let me take a little drink of water. So yeah, um, I think as long as, as Activision kind of just steps out of the way and lets the developers do what they want, focus on competitive, um, Call of Duty can really, in the multiplayer side of things, this is excluding the, uh, the Battle Royale, which we already talked about, I think the multiplayer could be revived if we just get rid of the BS stuff, like specialists, and, and specialists have a place. I don't, I don't see too big of a problem with specialists, but like the stim packs, riot shields, extra body armor, extra bullet damage, that type of thing is like, get like, get rid of the gimmicks. Give me the extra health. I love where they're at with 150 health. I give me 200. You know, there's a, there's a thing, a specialist ability where you can get everyone up on your team to like 300 health. Give me 300 goddamn health points in call of duty. And let's call it a day. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? I've been calling for this for a while. Um, Call of Duty should have a lot more health. It shouldn't be as melt melting. And I think with more health, it gets rid of some of the flukiness and some of the real issues that people have with the gameplay mechanics of Call of Duty is where you'll come around the corner and feel like you'll die instantaneously. And then other times it'll feel like you shoot someone 77 times and they don't die. I think it's just because of the time to kill. I literally solely think it's the time to kill. Um, servers have been discussed. People are like, Call of Duty servers are trash. Uh, I get it. I get why they're saying that. And then they, they need dedicated servers. Guess what? Um, Sledgehammer with World War II brought us dedicated servers. World War II has dedicated servers for the most part. There's some weird stuff. Uh, but it, it's advertised to have dedicated servers. And, you know, playing on my... I have a NetDuma, in case y'all don't know what that does. It's a gaming router where I could see where I'm getting pinged to, which what's the host. And it seems pretty consistent that uh, even in public matches, dedicated servers are there. Like, I, I, I look at my NetDuma, it always pings to, like, a certain place, mostly in San Francisco because I'm in the West Coast, and I know there's a dedicated server there. A lot of the times, my uh, dedicated server, my host, will ping in San Francisco. Um, so I know that a lot of the time we are on dedicated servers, regardless of what people say. Um, at least maybe my NetDuma is lying to me. Maybe they're doing something with the packets. But I can see that I am connected to a, a host dedicated server a majority of the time for public matches. Sometimes it'll be weird. There'll be one in like Texas or something. Maybe there's a dedicated server there too. I'm not sure. But that just being said, um, so that's that's really where I think this, this whole melting problem slash people eating problem comes with in Call of Duty is the time to kill. If we increase the time to kill, which we're doing this year, we're going in the right step. Um, but I think it needs to be like Halo, like massive amount of time to kill. And the reason why I feel like this, it, well, like, obviously I'm saying is because I feel like that would get rid of a majority, 99.9% .9 of the problems of people getting insta melted, of people eating bullets. Everyone's going to eat. That's going to be the thing. Gunfights are going to be based on skill. They're going to be based on aim. They're going to be based on strategy. They're not going to be based on who has the best internet. They're not going to be based on who's pinging to the server, who's closest to the server. They're not going to be based on luck. It's not going to be RNG on whether I get the first shot off and I still die because you're connecting to the server better because your host your host freak is fucking me to use the term in Call of Duty and you're getting the kill because your host you see things a millisecond before I do and therefore you're going to get that extra bullet you're going to get that extra bullet tick you're going to get a, a weird hitbox thing it, it's just I honestly I don't know anything about coding I don't know anything about programming so this is just my feeling take it at its face value because that's all it's worth I think that if we increased um, time to kill like in halo i think it would be a lot more fun a lot more enjoyable to play call of duty um i think that it would get rid of a lot of the melting a lot of the eating and a lot of the all around bs that comes in some gunfights in call of duty just today i <laughs> oh this was on stream i don't know how it happened um i i it has to have been a server thing because i, I i'm making excuses maybe i don't know but I was in, um, if you're familiar with World War II, I was on St. Marie du Mont. I was bottom post in the little corner by the boxes, waiting for someone to come through the doorway. Someone came through the doorway. I shot him three times. I unscoped to hip fire him, started hip firing. Nothing was hitting. So then I ADS back on him, right on his face. He turns around and kills me. He was one shot. No idea how it happened. I think if time to kill was higher. I would, I would have a chance, and that guy would have a chance to jump out of the way and actually fight gun skill and, and have better aim than I would. And I think it would be better for both people. You know what I'm saying? I think it would just... I, I, I just do. I don't, like I said, take it at face value. I have no no knowledge of programming. I have no knowledge of coding. No knowledge of making video games at all. That's just something I think would help a lot. And I think that might even be the case. I think that's why they're implementing 150 point health system in black ops 4 rather than just 100 like which i imagine is how it's been on the scale how they're scaling it they just gave us 50 extra health points to make the gunfights last longer and to just give skill that little minute amount of skill the upper hand if you will 
And so that's that's really what I think. And just to go on um, to what I was con I was saying earlier after the bar battle royale thing, I wanted to get into. After I take a drink of the water, is uh, the whole one year Call of Duty cycle. This is they're playing a dangerous game with this. I know they've done it for a long time. I know back in the earlier days, um, I believe it was just Infinity Ward was making Call of Duties, and it was just every year Infinity Ward. Treyarch helped like way back in the day. They helped on a, I believe Treyarch either helped or made Call of Duty Two Big Red One, which was a, a it, it, I don't even I, I'm so confused with Big Red One. It was like a DLC extension for Call of Duty Two that was only on the PC. It was something like that. Um, so Treyarch helped or developed Big Red 1. And then they started taking over, you know, trading off between Infinity Ward and Treyarch. Uh, World at War was Treyarch, or was, um, yeah, was Treyarch's first game, you know, multi-platform game that they made. And um, they switched off between cycles. And it kind of made sense because it was just like, okay, give Infinity Ward a little bit more time. Then Treyarch, and then Treyarch gets a little bit more time, and then Infinity Ward. And then we added Sledgehammer, which I've liked both Sledgehammer games. I don't know about y'all. Advanced Warfare is my favorite Call of Duty to date. You already know that. I really like World War II, even though I seem to get I, I get bored really quickly on it. Um, and then we have Treyarch games, which everyone loves Treyarch games. I didn't really like Black Ops 2. I hated Black Ops 1. Black Ops 3 was awesome. I like Black Ops 3. Um... So, my concern with the one-year Call of Duty cycle and why I think it needs to go away, I think a Call of Duty game needs to last, If especially when they're putting this much content in it, I think Call of Duty needs to last at least two years. Uh, they need to go on like a battlefield cycle of releasing games because they're very ambitious. Let me say this. Um, th what they're doing this year is very ambitious. Not only are, not only are they releasing so much content uh, day one on launch, which is kind of nerve-wracking because Call of Duties the past couple years have not been complete on launch, which is like kind of tying into this. Um, I, I understand they released the multiplayer, and that gives them freedom to do this other content, but they're releasing four Zombies maps day one, launch, which is f insane to me. Well, the most we've ever had is two, I think. May even two, yeah, I believe it, two has been the max amount of zombies, you know, things we've we've had in the past. Um, and this, it's four. We're, they're doubling it. Four zombies maps day one, and that's nine. Blood of the Dead, uh, uh, Voyage of Despair, and then Classified, which is probably going to be five remake, which I, that might may or may not have already been confirmed. Um, so four zombies maps. We're going to have multiplayer, which is going to have more things in it than we've ever seen before. I'm, I'm almost positive it's going to have a shit ton of guns. Um, the specialist abilities, obviously. And partly why they can do this with multiplayer is because they're kind of just taking Black Ops 3 and tweaking it a little bit. No advanced movement. They're, they have still even some of the same special uh, specialist abilities in there. Specialist weapons. Seraph is in there again. Some of the same characters, so I get it. And then also new game modes. And then obviously the big one, the Battle Royale Blackout Mode. And with so much content, it had literally, before the next Call of Duty comes out, think about it. Call of Duty has less than 12 months to enjoy all of that stuff. And I realize they understand the attention span is getting shorter and shorter. And that's not even true. If you look at it, YouTube videos used to be in the 3 to 5 minute range. Because people used they used to think you know that was the thing millenniums have uh, millennials have short attention spans so YouTube videos will be three to five minutes because that's where people's attention span was. If you look at it now, YouTube videos are quite long. People love thirty minute videos. People love hour long videos. People like to listen to hour long to three hour long podcasts with Joe Rogan the JRE. So I I really I I really combat the fact that. The you know the the point that people make that attention spans are getting smaller. I completely disagree with that. Uh, I think it just depends on the medium, like podcasts. I'll gladly listen to a two or three hour podcast at work, no goddamn problem. I'll gladly watch an hour long YouTube video of PewDiePie playing Detroit Become Human. I have no problem with that, and I think a lot of people don't. And it's all about watch time now on YouTube. So I really combat the fact that you know people say or it's not even a fact. Combat the thing that people say that attention spans are getting smaller.
I really think it did for a little bit with social media, and now it's kind of going the other way because people are finding out how to use mediums correctly. Um, it's going the other way where people's attention spans are getting longer. They want to consume longer content. Um, and so, yeah, that's besides the point. Um, so I really think that Call of Duty needs to move to a two-year cycle so that we could fully enjoy. And they don't, they're not stressing as much and putting out a subpar a subpar game. And and I think that's it. Nate Shot is I, I've heard Nate Shot say this a lot and I've heard Hitch say this a lot. Um uh it's like people are super stoked and they're like, Well yeah, even if Black Ops four is super good, it's the best call of duty to date, they're worried that the next developer, Infinity Ward, is going to come up with their game, and a year later, and it's just going to set Call of Duty back to where it was. It's kind of, and, and I've actually heard them, they've said this on the Optic Podcast multiple times, that Treyarch always puts Call of Duty two steps ahead, and then the next developer will come along and set Call of Duty five steps back. And that's really, really concerning to me with the one-year Call of Duty cycle, is that Call of Duty will never be able to inch its way back up there, because it's always two step, oh, boop, and then two steps, and then up oh, five steps, and it just, it, it really, I, I think it needs to go to a two-year cycle, at least a year and a half, give the developers time to produce quality content, even if it's a lot of content, give them time to polish it, and clean it up, and put out a game that they're, they'll pr- they're proud of, and that people actually want to play, and that's really what I want to see is a two-year Call of Duty cycle. Let us enjoy the game. Give us more than 12 months. I'm sure pro players would like it. Um, I'm sure a two-year cycle would be very good for the competitive scene because it gives people the extra time to practice, it, and it, it would just bring the skill ceiling up that much higher, and it would just it would force batshit crazy open tournaments I feel like where upsets galore which kind of already happened but imagine a two year cycle where uh, an amateur team has been playing a game for two years they come out and just smack the top you know pro pro players I'm sorry I keep burping imagine that I think that's what a two year cycle has the potential to do for it and you know that's really that's it that's what I wanted to talk about today like I said I didn't have a plan of where I was going with this I kind of just wanted to talk uh, the beta, I'm definitely going to have a podcast after the beta, you know, if I'm not lazy as shit, if I actually stick to what I'm, you know, consistency, ah, consistency, and, you know, I just want to thank you guys for sticking around, if you, if you listen to this whole thing, props to you, I, I really appreciate you, it's been almost an hour now, I'm really excited for that, because I expected to only talk for like 20 minutes, didn't really have a plan, um, so, thank you so much if you, if you made it this long, Definitely let me know in the comment sections below, whether it be on SoundCloud, iTunes. Uh, if, if you would like, give it a five star rating on iTunes. Let me know how you're. Let me know how I'm doing. Give me constructive criticism. Um, give it a hot thumbs up on YouTube. All that type of stuff, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I, I stream pretty much every day. If you want to check me out, twitch.tv slash ESP underscore micro. Um, I'm, a, I'm an affiliate now. I'm a Twitch affiliate. I can officially say that. I have a sub button. Go sub up. Um, follow me, join the micro militia if you're into that type of thing. And thank you guys once again so much for tuning into the podcast. Shout out to my sponsors, Fade Grips. Um, I'll have all that down below in the description. Insane Labs. Um, yeah. Um, Cinch Gaming. Uh, a spe- a special thanks to Insane Labs. They have great products over there. I can't recommend them enough. Insane Focus for gaming. It, 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 it. it it's so like it gives you that extra level it has a chance to make you from an amateur to a pro and i'm not saying that just because they're my sponsor i kind of am but i'm kind of not um but yeah it's it i let me just give you guys a, a I don't know why I'm doing this, but I took some insane focus before I meditated. And a problem I have when I meditate is I tend to wander off a lot or I even tend to fall asleep or doze off. And I took insane focus before I meditated. Bruh, I I was laser focused on those instructions. I was just boom, focus on my feet, boom, focused, focus on this, boom, focus on the breath, boom, insane focus. It, it, it's it's almost a miracle. I'm not even saying that just because they're a sponsor either. Get some insane focus for your gaming. If you're into meditation, get some insane focus for that. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in once again. I've been micro. I don't. I, that's not my outro. Let your people know. Let's go back old school. I haven't done that in a while. Let your people know that micro is out here spitting knowledge, straight facts. 
opinions, you know, quotation marks, opinions, or uh, parentheses, opinions. And I will see you guys on the Black Ops 4 beta. I'm going to stream for three days straight during the Black Ops 4 beta. Just saying. Anyways, guys, I've rambled enough. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.